Eva, what did you bring? Let's make sure we can hear what you say too. Ooh, okay, tell us what that is. It's a magazine, Country Life. And, and Homestead. Homestead by Jill. Okay. Hmm. All right, we'll hear more about that in just a moment. And LaRue, what did you bring? I brought a quote. Ooh, okay. <laughs> You're like, sneak. Oh, we won't. Don't give it all away. Don't give it all away. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you both for being here for this episode of Not Quite Strangers. My name is Valerie Hope, and I am your host. And this is an opportunity to bring two people who do not know each other, yet I am very fond of, <laughs> and to meet. And the whole notion of this podcast is to inspire curiosity, to build connection. And if we're lucky, we may even challenge the status quo. Now, <laughs> now I have the the, the fortune of having amazing people in my life. And you all hear this probably in every single podcast episode that I produce. So there's no exception today. I have two very important characters here. And before we start digging into why these two not quite strangers were deemed to come together, just want to make sure that any one of you who's tuning in is subscribed to www.notquitestrangers.com. That way you don't miss a single episode. When we, air, when we live stream them or when they're posted, you get notified the moment that they are hot off the press. Good. Now, these two lovely individuals I've known for some years, actually Eva Castilla and I are relatives. She is my sister-in-law, is married to my older brother, Eduardo. So Eva and I go back, we met in college, Eva, right? <laughs> yes. so, it's been 95. a couple of decades. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of decades. Just a tad. And actually, LaRue, Eva and I were friends first, by the way, before she and my brother. And then now I understand why she was so friendly. If you know what I mean. But I one of the reasons I invited Eva here is. First of all, Eva, you've been on my other podcast, Time to Come Alive. Mm -hmm. And actually, Eva, you were instrumental in naming this podcast, yes. Not Quite Strangers. We like had this like big brainstorm one day as I was trying to figure out a name. And she was the one that helped me hone in on this one. So thank you so much. And you've played such a huge role in everything I do and specifically around how I decorate my space, how I organize myself. You're the person that I come to whenever I know that I need to zhuzh up my energy. And, and a lot of it has to do with the physical manifestation of where things are in my life. So Eva, thank you so much for that. But I knew I wanted you on the podcast, but then I was just thinking, who would be a great stranger for Eva to meet and have a meaningful conversation around this? And then enter LaRue Ebler. And LaRue, <laughs> LaRue you and I have known each other maybe a couple of years now, I think. October, it will be two years in October. Two years in October, our anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> and I, your, LaRue, your, rep your reputation preceded you. So when we first met, it was because my pastor at my church was telling me about you coming in to be a guest speaker, I think. And I'd heard your name a few times, but she spoke of you so highly that I was like, who is this lady? And it turned out the day that you were coming, I couldn't be there. So we actually planned to meet because I was like, I got to know who this person is. And we met at the Wellness Expo here in Dallas, Texas. And we spent, I think, like two hours or something. Two to three hours. Two to three hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a thought. And I since know. then, just, you know, you have been such a an inspiration to me. You've also been on my previous podcast, Time to Come Alive, had a wonderful conversation there. And the last, one of our last conversations, most recently, I can't even remember how we got to this point in the conversation, but we were doing some work together. You were working with me on some of your, your, your specialty, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And you shared how important it was for you to have a beautiful environment and how part of your soul, like interior decorating was there. And you work so much also with energy and beauty. And I was like, that's the person I need to introduce to my sister-in-law. Uh, 
and it all came together right here on time. I'm not quite strangers. So uh, cool. welcome to both of you to the podcast. <laughs> Yay. What a joy and an honor. I always feel delighted and joyful and blessed to be in your presence. Really, truly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really it's a lot of fun. Thank you both so much. So I'm glad because this is only going to amplify the fun and the joy in the moment, because now that you guys are connecting, this is going to be great. So let's, let's just start off with some, some baseline. You both brought an object that I asked you to, that represents an important piece of who you are and what you bring to the world. So let's start with Eva. You shared a couple of magazines. So tell us why you picked magazines and what do those represent for you? Well, one is magazine. The other one is a book. Oh, got it. So this is living the country life. Um, I love this magazine. And re what represents me is my love for country, the country and nature and simple living. And it represents being in touch with, with our environment. Mm -hmm. so, and then, and I love country style interior decorating. That's my, my favorite thing ever. And then this Jill Peterson, I, met, I knew about her a few years ago. Um, she used to have a magazine called, um, I think it was Simple Life. And what she did was she will go all around the country in the United States and photograph and record houses, like uh, historical houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just fell in love with it because for me, this also represents my love for simple life. And even though some of these houses are not my style, I still, I still share them a lot, like what it represents. And every piece these people had was very special. Mm. It was handmade, it took a long time to have. So it lasted a, a long time. It passed generation through generation and they didn't have a lot, but what they had was treasure for them. So mm -hmm. that's why I like it so much. Well, I, I have one quick question. So Eva, um, Luru, you should know, Eva's originally from Spain, from Tenerife, Spain. Um, hence the, the Spanish accent. But Eva, when you say country, right, and you're talking about, um, you just shared the book for the travel that this particular author did in the US. I'm curious, do you feel the same way about your home country and the, the aesthetic around country life there? Oh, yeah, I love it. Really? I, What's I the think, difference? Well, the, the aesthetics are different, right? It's different. Each country has their, but every time I go to a different country, that's what I look for. I don't, I don't go to the modern, I go to the old, like the old historical, because for me it represents history, but it also represents, I don't know, I just, I just like my way of life, my, what I visualize myself is very, being very simple and having, don't have a lot of things in the house, but whatever I have is super precious. And I like that. And I don't know, somehow that represents that to me. And they did things with their hands. So everything was not always done in a factory with a million thousand other objects the same, looking the same way. It was more special. Of course, you know, this is like a very general view, of course, you know. But that's what it represents to me, kind of. So, anyways. Mm. And they are beautiful too. I, I love the style the, yeah got it okay I, can i say something here please i love that eva and it, it's like i really get what you're saying because these things that are handmade to me is a person's soul it's an expression of that particular soul and to be passed down through generations is is like wow that soul mm -hmm. is passed on yes it may not be embodied any longer and that's that's the thing too is is that's exactly that's exactly what it is for me is the soul because it's so much it has life right and you feel the energy at least I kind of do and so it's an honor for me to have something that other people have had in the past yeah. um, it's like 
it's like, wow, I cannot believe I'm having this. The other day I bought something from, well, not the other, like, what was that? Two months ago, something handmade from a grandmother that I found on a thrift store. And it, it was made in 1900s, 19, no, 1800s. And I thought, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I'm getting this. So anyways, it's the soul of the object that is there. And so for me, that's what represents, yes. Anyways, sorry. Mm. I'm just going, <laughs> but yes, that's exactly what it is for me. Yes, the soul. Soul of the object, lovely. And LaRue, I'm curious about your quote. What is the quote and what is the significance behind it for you? All right. Before I read the quote, I would say, Eva and I should have spoken before, but I guess it's all perfect, <laughs> right? Because when you read your magazine, because I was thinking for days, like, what am I going to bring? Even up till this morning, I thought, I'll know when I wake up. And, and it just wasn't, it just wasn't coming. And so I came up with this quote, but if Eva and I had spoken and she showed me what she was going to bring and this whole conversation, I would have brought a book called Simple Abundance by Sarah Ann Brethna. Mm -hmm. oh. And I read it like in the mid nineties. And I remember just sitting down, you know, it's something you can read a little bit every day. Right. And, um, and I would feel so warm and such beauty just reading that book. And I realized that the words in that book <clears throat> activated my soul. Mm. So here's my quote. And it's, I made it up this morning. <laughs> I was asking, well, I was asking myself, you know, what represents my passion for creating beauty and order, which is what you had proposed to us. And I, I just... That you, you ask the deepest questions like that question. I don't know if I'll ever get a full answer. I'll probably have many different versions to my answer to that, but it's so profound. So here's my quote. Beauty is the golden key that unlocks the felt experience and warmth of the soul. Oh, you're going to have to read that one. Oh again. my gosh. Ooh, say it again. Beauty is the golden key that unlocks the felt experience and the warmth of the soul. Beauty is the golden key that unlocks the felt experience and the warmth of the soul. I'm going to cry right now. Wow. Okay. That was getting, <laughs> that's so beautiful. Mm. What moves you about that one, um, LaRue? And then I want to hear Eva's reaction. Well, you know, I was asking, you know, why is beauty important to me? And um, I never really asked that question. I mean, you know, I knew it was important, but I never really asked why. And then I just started looking around my home at things that I think are beautiful. And I try to only have things that are really beautiful. Just, you know, kind of the same thing that Eva is saying in a different way, right? And, um, and it's like, it's this, it, it's like, beauty is important because beauty is felt it's not just something you see with your eyes it creates a visceral response in you and when when you feel that and you know and if we judge it and deem anything beautiful that makes us come alive mm -hmm. and we feel our inner presence rather than just the you know my personality self that can be going through the day doing tasks or whatever I feel a connection mm. a certain you know a a um a, a certain aroma in a cam candle I can literally feel my heart get warm mm -hmm. and there are certain smells that shut it down but if I deem it beautiful my heart opens you know a presentation of how a meal is presented just brings me right back home to my soul Mm. Right. Now share the quote again from that. Now that we all have embodied and we can see and hear and sense what you what yeah. you wanted to say yeah. with it. Share the quote again. So for for you all and maybe you know those who are listening, like I don't know of anyone who doesn't love flowers. Mm. You know, and that if you ever get present to a flower, particular, uh, you know, particularly one that you really, really love. Just remember that as I read this quote, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're really present with a flower, the looks, you know, what you're looking at, what you see and what you smell. Beauty is the golden key that unlocks the felt experience and warmth of the soul. Mm -hmm. 
Help experience the warmth of the soul. I, I feel that, you know, many people um, that I've met, sometimes they'll get that warm feeling in their heart center. And most of them don't know that is their presence, their inner presence showing up. Call it soul, call it light, call it presence. But I've learned that that's my soul. And when I'm in that space of feeling that, I can know things. I mean, I just have insights and inspiration and, and knowings that I don't have when I'm in my thinking mind. Hmm. Oh, I, I 100% and I, and I get that knowing and understanding those sensations that they are speaking to us, like having an awareness that those sensations are speaking to us is yeah. important. You know, it was interesting when you asked for us to think about a flower. I'm actually not a person that enjoys flowers as much. I, you can see you have a lot of greenery. I love plants. But um, what I was thinking though, is like, so what is it? What has, what catches my attention about plants? And generally is how uniquely structured the leaves are or how they, if, if they're like one of those that are spreaders, like what, how they hang or how they, how they, how they bunch. So I have all types, but they're usually very unique in, there's some sort of textural difference or something. They don't all have to flower. If, if they do, that's kind of cool, but there's, I'm much more apt to get a plant and much feel, feel more moved by getting a plant than I would a flower. Because I, I also have it that flowers after some time, especially if they're cut flowers, they, they have an expiration date. Yeah. Um, with plants, I feel like the, the, the ability to nurture them is also quite meaningful. But um, I, I want to move to Eva, your react. Yeah, go ahead, Laura. We actually are drawn to the thing we're drawn to for the very same reason. You heard the word plant. I do love plants too. But it's like the texture, the shapes, the all, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The same reason. <laughs> yeah. The aroma may not be as evident. <laughs> Which is why I do fresh flowers every week <laughs> for the smell. Smell opens my soul. If it's the right smell, I feel my heart chakra burst wide open. It's yeah. The smell makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Eva, you were really moved by the quote. So I want to hear what was it about that quote that moved you? Well, I'm, I'm also moved by beauty. And I... And, you know, beauty is very subjective. So, you know, beauty could be anything to anybody. And that's also the beauty of the beauty. <laughs> and for me, beauty represents each one of us. Um, like we can be expressed in any different way and be beautiful. And beauty for me represents the soul also in the sense like we live in a world that despite the news and everything, I think is beautiful. We look around, it's beautiful. Even if we pay attention to the pavement, mm -hmm. you can find very cool things about the pavement. It's just a way of how you look at the world. Yeah. And coming from there, the, as LaRue said, the, the world, the, the soul is kind of looking at the world in, looking for for things that call our attention that are beautiful to us is a way to express our soul and that's how we find ourselves too i think um i think it connects us to something that perhaps a lot of us have lost or don't remember and and it will shift something i don't know if i'm explaining myself well but um I think it's very important to be surrounded by beautiful things that one love in the house, and it could be anything, you know. Um, it's a way to nourish the soul and, and to be in touch with who that we are, each one of us are. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there because I have a lot of thoughts, but I'm not <laughs> sure how to process. <laughs> no, I think you gave us a nice glimpse. I think one of the things that I've appreciated about you, Eva, is so, so LaRue, you should know, although Eva does not do this necessarily as a professional, as a vocation, she also, she has great instinct 
for what brings an individual, you know, so you mentioned about beauty being very subjective, but you have a way of not having this, here's what beauty is, and this is the style that you should have your home. Mm -hmm. You have a way of tapping into helping me, and in, in my case, identify what that is. And I'll give a brief example. So when I first moved in, I've lived in this specific apartment for a long, long time. And it took about five years of that long, long time for me to actually take things that I had in boxes, under beds, in closets, stacked in different manners that I'd collected. And you know, I traveled quite extensively over you know, so many years of my life. And I always bought things from different places. But because I didn't realize that I was going to actually unpack in an apartment, I don't know what I thought, but I, for some reason, got into the habit of collecting it, but not really displaying it. And there was a point in time where Eva challenged me and she's like, Valerie, you have all this cool stuff that you've collected for a purpose. Why, why aren't you surrounding yourself with it? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so we started like, looking through all the boxes and she's like what about this and what about that and where do you i'm like oh my gosh i forgot i had that oh i got that in estonia oh i got this from uh, from you know from japan oh, i got and i just started to really start to appreciate that you know the, the what my soul told me in the moment that had me buy it first of all and then i just totally put it away and started to pick those things out so what you see now anything that you all see in my screen a lot of it was inspired by conversations I had with Eva who had me really identify and get present to what are those elements of your life or of your soul that you wanna see expressed physically in your, in your space. We might, do, we might need to do a little zhuzh up because I feel like now it's a, like a little too much. I'm a little stimulated, but I, I, I appreciate both of you really calling out beauty being an expression of our soul because I also get sometimes in our society, how we want to, uh, that we encapsulate beauty this time at this age, at this generation looks and should be like this, yeah. you know, based on the likes, based on the popularity, based on how much, you know, the value that we add. So I'm, I would love for the two of you to maybe speak to that in your experience, or maybe as you interact with the world, what what do you what do you make out of how we interpret and express beauty? Well, um, excuse me. I um, for many years, you know, I always you know never felt like I was beautiful enough, and I'm not classically beautiful. I would not be on the cover of a magazine or any of that. But I've come to learn that our inner light, when someone is at peace, when someone loves, when someone has kindness, that is beauty. And as I started aging, I think in my 40s, um, I had a friend who was 20 years older than me, and I hadn't seen her in some time, and she had aged. But I looked at her, she showed up, and I was just like, oh my God, she's even more beautiful than before, more lines and wrinkles. But the light in her eyes, the presence, she was so confident, not in an not in an egoic sense, but just an inner knowing. She was so connected to the truth of her being. I went, wow, that's probably the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And, and now I have several friends who are 20 years and, you know, 15 years, my senior, and they're, you know, have leathered skin or whatever, but the light and the vibrancy, and they're so alive and they're so wise. Wisdom is beauty to me. Mm. And so I'm, quite honestly, still in the process of redefining beauty when it comes to my physical self, um, because I'm aging and the wrinkles are coming and, and, you know, every day it seems like there's a new one, a little more saggy skin here. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really in the process of redefining that and feeling for my soul. And when I feel my soul, I feel beautiful, whether the world thinks so or not, doesn't really matter. I feel beautiful. Mm. Oh, I, I love, love, love that. And I want to say more, but I want to hear, Eva, I saw you nodding <laughs> slowly. So I'm curious, what, how does that resonate for you? Well, I'm thinking of my life. Uh, growing up as an adolescent, I was very, very much involved in the magazines. And I don't want to say, Okay, 
the magazines could be very cool, you know, because I also love fashion. Um, so I appreciate a lot that part of the magazines is how we do what, how we use it, right? Um, so in my case, my journey has been of accepting myself the way I am, because I was very much comparing myself to the magazines. Mm. And growing, I mean, I'm 40 something, I don't remember now, I always forget 47 or <laughs> eight or something like that. I always, I always have to do the okay <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> because I got to a point where I'm like I don't care I don't I don't care about age I mean when people say how old are you I'm like seriously I'm not kidding I don't care I could be 60 I, for me it's, it was La Rue says right how do you feel inside and but I have to learn that a long a long way and trying and then now it's very interesting because I see my body change too, and how I used to be very fit and very cool, like, -hoo -hoo, you know, and now it's not like that anymore. <laughs> so it's been a, a very psychologically draining process for me to be able to be where I am now, where I can go outside with my cellulitis and I don't give a crap, <laughs> you know, but to be able to do that. I mean, I really literally started doing that a month ago mm. because I wasn't able to before. I was so ashamed. And, and that's, that's where, you know, I think if we are in touch with who we are, is what Larue says, everything, everything becomes beautiful. Mm. Um, I personally think that this culture um, in the West is very, very uh, focused on the beauty look, has to look uh, very young and they don't really value the beauty of old age or mature age. And for me, that's a shame because each stage of our life is beautiful since we are born until we are dying on bed you know is because beauty comes with the experience and your life and how much you have grown and that shows um and you know that's that's something that i see that this culture is kind of i don't agree with let's put it like that <laughs> And it's also for men too, you know, like I see, I've seen that with men. It's a lot of pressure on men also. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. And, uh, and it's kind of mess, messed up. It's messing up the way it doesn't allow, that filter doesn't allow ourselves to look at who we really are and value who we really are. And it stops us from connecting to other people just because of how they look. Yeah. Yeah. And also about race. I mean, it's about age, but it's about race. It's about, you know, if you are going, if you're wearing this type of clothes, then I don't want to look at you. Mm. You know, it's like, it's all this stuff instead of saying, well, be more curious, right? Mm -hmm. or, or learning more about the person. Or, yeah. Everything can be beautiful. It depends on how we look at it. If we're looking at the surface, whether we're looking at that or that warmth. But... Larue, what, what would you say to that? Oh, I just love everything you're saying and you're making perfect sense to me. I, I especially love what you said about everything can be beautiful and it depends on how we look at it. You know, I used to want, let's say all my dishes to have no scratches. They needed to look perfect. And then someone said to me one day, she, she loved to, to go buy old things, right? I would never walk in an antique store, but you know, I find them fascinating and resale stores fascinating now. But it's like I have um uh I had a friend who um her she's very much how I used to be. Her husband chipped a glass and she threw it in the trash and he was not happy about that. But it, you know, it didn't represent beauty to her. And, and my definition of beauty has become so much more broad than it used to be. It's like now if I have a crack in a glass and I, I do have some with chips in them, 
it's like, oh, I remember that moment. And, and there were people here. And I remember that event that I would not have remembered those people coming over had I not had the chip in the glass. Yeah. You know, it's like it happened, you know, and it's like, oh, now I cherish it. It has it has much more meaning to me now than it did when it was perfect and matched all the others. Yes. <laughs> it's a story, right? The the stuff that we use the is is about the objects and who we are. The more experience we have, the more ex, the more the more history the object has, the more used up it's going to look like, but that makes it more special. Mm -hmm. because it tells a story it's it's not just like a plane which is cool I mean I have new things too but the the story what it teaches us you know that's the special thing mm -hmm. well you all both mentioned the soul right and and the soul is eternal so if there's an object that had that experience that 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 when we had that visceral I'm just kind of playing this out. I don't even know where I'm going with what I'm going to say right now, but I'm just in the moment here that if we see something and we have a visceral reaction to it, whether that's a warm that warmth that washes over us or brings a smile to our face, or we have maybe goosebumps or excitement or whatever that bodily sensation that shows up when we get it, how do we keep that bodily sensation present when it gets chipped? or when is no longer in style, or when maybe there's a ver better you know, 2.0 version, a newer color or something like that, right? I think about, <laughs> uh, I mean, we could talk about like the physical aspect, but I remember, I, I love these dishes called the uh, Le Creuset, right? I like mm -hmm. to cook yeah. cast iron predominantly with cast iron pot, uh, cookery. And I remember going, when I worked in the in the hotel industry, I often visit our, our chefs in the kitchen and hang out there. And I learned so much about cooking, but I, was, I would always admire in one of our particular hotels, they used a lot of Le Creuset dishes, which I knew were quite expensive, but they look beautiful. They're you know, usually really vibrant colors and interesting shapes. And I had a goal that I'm like, I'm going to get one of those. That's not from the hotel. I wasn't stealing, <laughs> but I knew I was going to purchase one at some point and eventually did. <laughs> and it was an investment. It was an investment piece. And I, <laughs> but I remember I was so mad when I scratched like the bottom of the, of the pan, you know, because of whatever I stuck on it or scraped something. And I was just like, I feel so much better for that. Of course, I'm like, I'm not going to go buy another one just because but it almost, for a moment, it lost this, that magic of why I wanted to get it in the first place, because of the scratches that were now you know, marring the bottom of it. And so, I don't know, if I'm hearing the two of you correctly, this idea of beauty being such an, you know, that inner guide that tells us this is beautiful for me or for you, how do we sustain that no matter what happens to the thing that we consider beautiful at some point? But I think, I think, and that's a great point that you've made because you are saying that and I'm thinking now of, of beauty in the, in the physical body, right? Huh. Once it's a scratch, once it has a wrinkle, once it's not perfectly young and beautiful, then I, we don't want it anymore. Mm. So that's a very interesting point. I just, I never thought of that. Um, and so I think for me is, what made you get that object in the first place and i think it's also an opportunity to question okay why am i so upset that i that it has a scratch because perhaps there is something there also you know it for like for for me it was a journey of being very perfectionistic mm -hmm. and now being able to relax and 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 so that was that was the thing for me because I used to be like that. I'm like I'm not using this. Mm -mm. It looks too. <laughs> but uh, but I I think that that's a really an opportunity for each one of us. Like okay, why if I love this so much and now I don't like it because this happened? Why why is that? How do I apply this to my life in other aspects? Because this is I'm sure I'm I'm sure that most of the time it will be a representation of how life is run or how one is behaving in life. And the object is just, you know, 
um, an example of how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so for me, that would be an interesting way of taking it as a learning, see what's going mm -hmm. on. But if you really like the object in the beginning, I mean, it's also like, did you like the object in the beginning because for you it represented a certain status or I'm not talking about you in particular. But no, you know. but that, that does. I, uh, because you know then, the truth you know. Truth be told, it was. I'm like, <laughs> I got my first piece of Lake Crusade. Now I have two. So there. <laughs> but you know, that's a little bit. Of, yeah, I know. So did you get it? Like, you know, and that's the thing too. Yeah. People get things, not because they really, really love it or because yeah. they really are connected to the piece, but because it represents something they, they want to be and they feel they don't have. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that could also, you know. Yeah. Actually... You know, it's interesting. I'll say one last thing. And Laura, I want to I I ask you a very specific question about this. So the yes, I did. I think for me, it was a little bit of a status symbol, right? Like the, these very accomplished and talented chefs. This is what they use. And not that I wanted to be a trained chef and a chef, but I, I found that this now like, elevated my abilities or capabilities like oh now I can cook with this stuff too yeah. um and I remember there being a point I used to keep it in the box I mean it was like a braising pan it was super it could be used for anything it could be used for, for sauteing things it could be used to braise things I mean it was and I remember I would keep it in this box and then there was always like this thing where I'm like I should use my Le Creuset today <laughs> so I would take it out of the box and like you know <laughs> Yeah, wash it and put it, in, you know, and then I cook in it and then make sure it was dry and then put it back in the box. And I did that for years. And I don't know, I think maybe Eva, it was probably a conversation that you and I had at one point while we were reorganizing my space where I was just like, but I really like using it and I could use it for so many more things. A, why do I keep it in the box? Because it's so inconvenient to have to like pull it out of the box and go through the whole production. And I could use it for everything. It literally could be like my go-to. Why mm -hmm. am I saving it up for a special thing, for a worthy moment? And I've since amped up. I'm going to have to use it again today now since I'm talking about it. But I feel like I had, I had it on this sort of pedestal or because of the maybe status that was associated in unconsciously. But then eventually started to realize. But it brings me pleasure to use it all the time not just in these key moments. So why am I not leveraging that? So anyways, that's that's what that brings to mind. But that's, can I say something there? Sure. That's something I am also thinking, sometimes we keep we keep objects for special occasions and that's okay too, you know, like yeah. people who have the set of China, for example, mm -hmm. and they, they want to use it for, I don't know, Christmas or like birthdays or, and that's, that's fine too, you know? It, because it, it it has to do with with how how do you say how the relationship we have with the object mm -hmm. but it has to come with from a place I, no it doesn't have to nothing has to but i think that when it can, when it comes from a place of love whatever it is that we are doing with that object then everything flows if it comes from a place of fear or feeling of feeling inadequate or feeling lacking then it's a different relationship so i just i just wanted to ooh. point that out oh i just got that if beauty is connected to love there's the freedom of expression but when it's connected to fear that's something that we have to be to look out for i don't know there's maybe a more yeah. sophisticated way but larue what what are you picking up on yeah, well, I, I love what you're saying, because um, to me, I had written down, but I'm reflecting on this this morning, like beauty and love are the same thing. They're, they're expressions, they're, they're essences of the soul. But like you said, if beauty activates fear, it's not activating the soul, it's activating the personality, or some people call it ego. Yeah. It, you know, all those identities of I'm not enough, I'm not enough this, I'm not pretty enough, not skinny enough, not rich enough, not what right it activates that so you know i think it's really important to know when we're feeling our soul versus being our everyday personality or ego just walking through life you know doing the next task in front of us um those two distinctions are really really important mm -hmm. and and when for me when you know you had asked earlier how do we keep that 
feeling of beauty alive. And I think, you know, um, or ha- I, something like that. That was just, some, some, was that your question? Something? I don't know, but it was, yes, it was. let's go with that one. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, yeah, it sounds good. But it's like, that's for me. And I don't do it every day. And I notice that if I'm not doing something to create beauty or experience beauty, every day. I'm not as happy. But so one of the reasons I do fresh flowers is, you know, for them to stay pretty longer, you need to clip them every day and put fresh water in them. Well, so in the morning, it's one of the first things I do is clip my flowers. It brings me present. It wakes me up from sleep. I'm kind of like halfway unconscious sometimes when I get up and and I smell them and I see them and they're so beautiful. And it puts me in a state of gratitude because I'm talking to them, telling them how gorgeous they are, Mm. how beautiful they are and the clean water and the whole, it's like a ritual. So So creating beauty, consistently that that's one way I do it for myself I don't paint a painting or rearrange a room or whatever every day because I have to work right but those flowers do that for me but I think that that beauty you know we can activate that feeling by doing something external or we can just connect to our inner presence Mm. and feel the beauty Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beauty rituals. That that's what an interesting way to redefine a beauty ritual, right? Because often we associate those two words, beauty ritual, with something external, with some sort of night cream, or perhaps there's a you know lavender infused something or other that goes on our body. But yeah. this idea of an action that activates that feeling, mm-hmm. right? That I think is fascinating. It is, and I love what La Rue says because I, I think also you know, activate beauty, what she said about being grateful, right, to the flowers, and it's the same as, I mean, I know, for me at least, I, you know, you can be grateful for your, your Le Creuset, yeah. you know, and, and thank the Le Creuset, thank you for, mm. for this, you know, you are giving me, and and it's not like you are talking to an object, but it's something, it's a, a an acknowledgement of why you got the object Mm -hmm. and being present to, you know, what LaRue said, being present to the object and whatever you are doing with it. So that's beautiful too, right? Mm. Um, So yeah, I like that a lot. I love the the idea that you, LaRue, you have your flowers as your morning routine. Um, I think, I think it's super beautiful and cool. And I love that you are doing that instead of, oh yeah, my morning routine, I wake up and I go running, whatever. <laughs> I mean, not because I'm against that, but because it's so soft and so gentle and so, you know. Mm. Gentle way of your life every morning and mm. wakes me up and, and I just have gratitude that I can have them, you know, that I get to have that experience and that those flowers were made and grown for me, yeah. for me. Mm. It's like no one else has them. They're mine. And the universe must have had me in mind when when they grew that batch of, you know, stargazers or whatever. But but I also think the gratitude activates beauty. And mm-hmm. going back to what Ava said about, you know, we can see the same object, you know, different ways. It can be beautiful. It can be ugly or something else. But gratitude changes our filter in how we see what we see and what we see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My son was telling me recently, which kind of surprised me that every morning, you know, he gets his coffee, he gets himself and he goes to get in his vehicle to go to his, his business. And he says, and I didn't know this. And I just loved it. And he said, every morning before he backs out of the driveway, he sits there with his coffee and he lists and says what he's grateful for in his life. I didn't know that. And and it just, it's like, oh, that's so beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful ritual. Anything that, it's so funny, like beauty can be anything. It can be kindness. It can be a ritual. It can be anything that brings joy and love and inspiration and creativity and upliftment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Kindness is beauty to me. Yes, it is. You're making me think, I'm like, what is my beauty ritual? <laughs> like, what is it? And I, the, the thing that comes to mind is music. Mm-hmm. I could tell you, 
I mean, I, I remember doing this activity. It was a leadership activity, actually, where we had to identify these moments in our lives that have marked who we are as leaders, right? And so I put all this stuff together. It was like a collage type activity. So I cut out images and words and photographs of family and coworkers and all of that. But there was something missing. And I remember at the end of this, this is probably an exercise I did like four years ago. There was something missing. I'm like, what is it missing? And I'm not an arts and crafty type person. So the, just the process itself was a little tedious for me, like to cut out things, and glue and all that markers. But I remember it took me some time. And, and I remember maybe two or three days after I started the whole thing and I was like, okay, I think I'm done. I'm done cutting out stuff in the magazine. And what was missing is, you know, music has a big part of my life, but I didn't want to do like, oh, when I was in band or when I took piano lessons, like that wasn't it. But I'm like, but just the music I listened to. So what I ended up doing was listing all of the songs that I remember that activated that joy in me ever since I was maybe in fourth grade. I remember my <laughs> uncle gave us a little cassette player that could you could set to an alarm that it would turn on, it could turn on the cassette or the radio. It, it was supposed to be for my mom, but she didn't know what to do with it. So I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> and I discovered waking up to music. Yes. That was a game changer. And I remember to this day, there was a song. I don't even remember the group that sang it. It was like promise, promises, promises. Da, na, na, na. Oh. And I remember that song coming on the radio. And I was like, I need to record that song because I want to wake up to it every morning. So that was like a period of time. So I have that song and I wrote it out on the computer and I printed it and put it on the thing. And eventually, as I started thinking of all those songs that did that for me, the whole carton of moments of leadership now have a border of music of songs and artists awesome. that through my lifetime have <laughs> woken like so would have known um so to your awesome. point larue I actually every morning that's my ritual i wake up to music that brings me joy right now i'm listening to a band called hige danism which is a japanese pop group and they have this song called Stand By Me that for the last few weeks has brought me joy. So I listen to that every morning in my wake up and I listen to the whole song. You know, sometimes they, you can, I don't, I know, I don't hit snooze. <laughs> so I, I'm like waking up and I'm like, yeah, in my bed. <laughs> and I jam out for a little bit and then I get my day going. So that's my beauty ritual. Um, yes, it is Thank awesome. you for bringing that. I had no idea that that would be a beauty ritual for me. Yes, that's it is. Awesome lovely but you know and i think it's important i'm thinking now of people who are really going through very tough times in their lives either because of these illnesses or family issues or whatever it is and every is so important to have a beauty ritual mm. you know i remember going through my own personal and if i hadn't had those rituals i would have gone crazy but as you say it could be anything from just a song like in my case, it was a salsa song that I loved and I would put it on, on my headphones and I would walk and go crazy and sing out loud in the street. And I'm like, <laughs> and that was kept me sane, really. But, you know, for other people, it could be the flowers, it could be whatever it is. It doesn't have to be, cat. yeah, it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be any specific, super like yeah. a spectacular thing, but it's so important, right? And sometimes I, it's like we, with this conversation, I'm realizing that, so many times we take for granted things we do that are our beauty ritual right. and we don't even think of that as, as so important for us to do mm. we just do it without being really present and then it's like oh my gosh yes i need to, to do this this is why i'm doing this mm. so yeah very cool Love what, that. so so two questions for you guys because i'm thinking as the audience is listening to this conversation you guys had me thinking about like, when you said that about the flowers of LaRue, I was like, what's my beauty ritual? So one, how does one get present to their beauty ritual? That's number one. And two, if it's gone, lost in the, or maybe there's nothing that you can think of that brings beauty. The second question is, how do you reconnect to that? Or how do you remove whatever the blocks are that maybe don't help us perceive it? So what, how would you guys answer those questions? But how do you I think, find it and how do you get reconnected? I think one thing I think is that we, the re, like things change, right? So it, it, the same as we change, mm -hmm. our rituals change. So even if 
we don't do something anymore that doesn't mean like we have to pick it up mm. perhaps it wasn't it was it had this purpose and that's it and now it's our time to find something else right so yeah. um yeah I, I i agree i i've noticed that my rituals change a lot throughout the months and years i mean i may start off one way at the beginning of the year and it might have changed two or three or four times between now and, and the end of the year you know i was just realizing one of my my beauty rituals is making my bed in the morning hmm. Like I love making my bed and because it looks so beautiful when I'm finished and I have that feeling of beauty and I'm listening to, gosh, I can't think of the author's name right now. I, you know, that song, I'm happy, you know, the room without a roof, um, you yes. know, oh gosh, what's his name? Phil, yes. Pharrell Williams, Pharrell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's my alarm. Mm. And, I, and if I don't use it and I use the just a regular alarm, I can hit snooze, but that gets me out of bed and I'm still halfway unconscious and I'm dancing while I'm making my bed to that song. <laughs> and I look at my bed, it's really beautiful. And you know, I go and do my teeth and all that stuff. And I go into the kitchen and, and do my flowers. But so I forgot your original question, but I think how do you tap into what your beauty ritual is you know maybe you're doing it already maybe there was a time you did something but just realize you know like look through your life is there anything you do in your daily life that feels beautiful or fun or joyful for you I mean you know you may not some people don't resonate with the word beauty maybe they resonate with the word joyful right or fabulous that makes you feel happy or joyful that's fine what is that and, you know, for some people, it's maybe grabbing a cup of coffee and going on the patio and listening to the birds or reading a book. You know, I was surprised that a friend of mine, um, he runs a Facebook group, put out a question about, do you make your bed every day? And I was, you know, all these people did. And he said he did. And it surprised me, you know, that, wow, here's a man who loves making his bed and making it, you know, look really nice. It feels really good to him. So look at those rituals. And then you had a question that was about how do you, uh, if you lose that, if you, if you, or maybe have some blocks, you know, to your point, maybe the word beauty doesn't resonate or joyful, but you know, Eva, you brought up people are, people are going through difficult times at any given point in life. And that tends to blind or, 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 yeah, I guess blind is probably the best word for it, right? To, to obscure the, whatever it is that brings that beauty and joy because there's the darkness is so heavy or so exhausting or overwhelming or whatever. So how does one clear him or herself for themselves to do, to connect to the beauty that's around them or to the joy? Well, I think they need to look at what they're saying to themselves. You know, like, oh, I don't have time. Uh, that's not important. You know, even three to five minutes is, you know, we, we think we don't have the time for that. But the truth is we, we usually do have three minutes. And if we don't, we probably need to take it, right? Um, to, to tune into that. So look at what we're telling ourselves. I know for, I didn't have plants for years because I didn't have the time to take care of them, right? It was like, no, they, no, I, I don't want to, you know, I just wanted to be free, you know, just let me be free. I don't want to have to have obligated to water my plants and make sure they grow. And so guess what they did when I would buy them or someone to give them to, they would die. Right. <laughs> I, I know. Right. But I have to say, I haven't killed a plant in a long time now. Mm. Yeah. Cause I'm taking the time and it's not really taking the time for the plant. It's taking time for me to say, I'm deserving of this. Right. So look at your beliefs about it. And I think, mm. I think that survival, when we're, you know, in survival, um, just trying to keep all the balls in the air, this seems like such a luxury, mm. we may not do it or connect to it, we might even not even turn on the music, like if you love music, why not have the music playing when you're getting, you're brushing your teeth or having your breakfast, or there may be ways to put it in there, you yeah. know. I recommend a soundtrack. I have a soundtrack to my morning. I have a soundtrack at night for my wind down. I have a, my car thing. I, yes, music is definitely <laughs> borders every aspect of life for me. Yeah. Uh, Eva, what would you add to that? I So my thing, um, I need silence instead of music. 
-hmm. it's funny that I use music when I when I really need to break break out of something mm -hmm. and uh, but my tendency is more silence um, so when you ask and of course I'm, I'm talking from my experience right but another like when you ask how do we tune in with the ritual mm -hmm. mm, Okay. Um, one thing that I like that LaRue said was the bed. It's very interesting because, and I read somewhere, I don't know, a long time ago, that making the bed is also very psychologically, it's a psychological thing. You make your bed and something feels accomplished, that you have accomplished something. Mm. And so that could be a start. Even even if it's not the ritual that you are going to choose, but it's, it's the feeling like something gets accomplished because sometimes, and I'm thinking of when we go through hard times, you don't want to do anything. You don't feel like doing anything. We don't, we don't feel like doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. But just something like the bed, that's, that's a step mm -hmm. because that could take a lot of energy just making a bed. But mm -hmm. it, it's like you do, we do the bed we then then suddenly it's like oh my gosh I've done something yeah. so it's the steps like that so I think um, when we don't feel like um, I think it's very important to be present with Laru says I'm sometimes present just need to okay I'm going to have a walk and I'm going to see what happens mm -hmm. and something will show up right. or you know, I go through the day doing things and, and I'm trying to notice what are the things that really make me be more connected to myself. And sometimes it doesn't have to be, I feel joyful, but it's very subtle. Like I do this and then I feel more calm mm -hmm. or yeah. I do this, this little thing and now my stress is a little less yeah. or, you know, and it could be like making a cup of tea. It doesn't have to be, you know. Yeah. So I think... I think it's just being present to what makes us be more centered. Mm. And then from there, everything else kind of shows up. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say this because I was just listening. Are you guys familiar with Esther Hicks? Oh, yes. And Abraham? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was just listening to a recording earlier before this we, we started. And in the interaction, Esther Hicks was talking to a person in the audience, one of her, her talks and uh, was asking him questions like, do you prefer to be relaxed or be stressed? And he's like, relaxed. Do you prefer joyful or gloomy? Like joyful. Do you prefer, um, you know, and she's like clarity, clarity or confusion? Like, clarity. <laughs> and it was interesting. So she kept asking him to like, think about these, these different um, emotions. And she said, if you could just focus on the emotions you want, forget about the activity. So sometimes we just have to get general. Yeah. Maybe it's not the thing that gives us the thing, but if you could just, what would give you more clarity in the moment? Just do that or try that. What would give you more relaxation in that moment? To go do that. And, and it's so simple because I was struggling with the leadership challenge that I was trying to figure out. and the figuring it out was causing me a lot of stress and overwhelm and yes. pressure and all the feelings that I don't enjoy having. <laughs> and so I was like, hmm, as I was listening, I'm like, so what, what action would cause me to feel relaxed? I'm like, you know, actually I can call a couple of people and just talk to them. Cause that'd be nice. I love talking to people clearly. Okay. And what action would actually feel less overwhelming and simple? I'm like, Oh, I can take this stuff off my to-do list. I don't want to do them. <laughs> I know, that? right? I was like, I know. Magical. It's the, <laughs> the little things. It's like I think we complicate ourselves so much sometimes. Yeah. You know, waking up in the morning with your favorite song is is amazing. Is like there it is, energy moving. You know, if somebody else needs something else, it's like instead of oh, this should be like this. No, it's what it is for you, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to do something and you have the 
you know, and you have the option of not doing it, don't do it. Why do you, don't do yeah. it? Just, or do it in a way that produces that emotion. Yes. Because, you know, yes, you still have to true. probably feed your animals and your children. And you still, you know, if you want to keep your job, you probably still have to show up. No, but I'm saying, thing. yeah. Like if you are, yeah. Wow. Things that you still have to do even though you don't want to. Yeah. Um, but as you say, and that's something you told okay. me a long time ago, right? Like, um, I think, I don't remember if it was related to your circle of influencers, but you know, sometimes we have the option to don't do certain things and we, we, are, we can do it, like we cannot do them. And we don't think that it could be beneficial for other people to do those for us. And we are helping those people, but not doing us something we don't really like at all. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, you know, so, so, I don't know why we are talking about this. It has nothing to do with. No, it's actually great. Okay, <laughs> I, that's, that's how the two of you came to my mind too, because both of you have been very instrumental in me doing something that I don't want to do or didn't like doing, didn't enjoy doing and giving it a frame that made it more joyful interesting right more more exciting to do i was so much more eva the, all the apartment stuff all the decorating stuff it's not something i'm even that interested in but when i'm doing it with you it's kind of fun and i enjoy it and you enjoy doing it so i'm like oh my gosh this is something she loves doing and larue when i'm working through like this problem and trying to figure something out and feel so weighed down by it <laughs> and you bring your magical frame of reference and some of the tools that you love to use to coach people i'm just like that's amazing i want to do more <laughs> so yes 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 ah uh, larue what you were going to say something <laughs> I, so, I, I i'm just been listening to you both and and i've got two words that just kind of keep jumping out at me and when eva, eva was talking about you know it's about being present or whatever i went yeah how do we create beauty or joy or whatever it is in our lives first of all we need to be present to be aware the word is awareness to have the awareness of as you said you know eva you kind of you know um you do, you do this and you notice oh that feels really good you know okay so now that's going to be my beauty routine or my joy routine or whatever and, and then, you know, um, Valerie, when you were talking, the word kept jumping out at, at me was exploration, kind of like an adventure. So it's like, so when you go on this exploration of, well, what does bring me joy? What does make me feel beauty? Not necessarily mm. feeling beauty and feeling beautiful are not the same thing to me. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I can feel beauty and not feel beautiful, right? <laughs> <laughs> but <Great>. feeling beautiful. <laughs> Feeling beauty helps me start to feel beautiful. It, it shifts my mindset. Mm -hmm. So having an aware, you go on an adventure, you go on an exploration, like go about this next week and say, wow, oh, you know, I, I did a little something different when I made breakfast this morning. That felt really lovely. You know, I put a little twist of lime on the top of my glass and when I had made my tea or lemon or whatever, and that felt beautiful. Maybe, you know, it's, it's you have the awareness, but it's an exploration. So explore the next week or so and um, and then have the awareness of that little thing that felt really lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got homework from LaRue, everybody. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's a I great exercise. It. I love it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I mean, clearly, you guys can already see and hear, I hope, why I thought the two of you together would be magical. Yeah, and it's yeah. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I'm shaking, like everything she says, like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, me too, me too, me too. Me too. <laughs> so now I'm curious. I'm just, and we could go on and on for years, but I want to just bring a moment to get present. Right. And it, since this was the whole conversation was an exploration of how the two of you might connect. So now I'm curious about what's that been like to be in this conversation with someone that was a, you know, not quite stranger because you knew each other through me, per se, at least in name. What has that been like for you guys this today in our conversation? Pure joy, just absolute joy. And I, it's like, oh, a kindred soul. <laughs> You know, she feels so familiar, you know, Eva, I'll say it to you, you feel so familiar to me, you know, getting to know you like, because it's really like me expressed outward, me projecting myself onto Eva, you know, when you said you like silence, yeah, me too, once the, the alarm clock with the song goes off, I go and turn off my air filter so it's pure silence in the house. 
or my air purifier. I was magical. It's what it's been. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's really. If I don't know, I think it is your energy, Larue, is so light. Oh, it's light and it's beautiful and I feel like this warmth over me mm. yes and I love it. I'm going to cry because I love I, I would love to you know to meet you in person you, you are such a lovely person I think we have a lot of things in common and it's just it's been amazing to to talk to you it really has Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> this is accomplished. Um, could I then say that I was the golden key that unlocked? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but I unlocked the felt experience for the two of you. <laughs> yes, indeed, you have. Indeed, because you know, when I'm connected to another soul, like I feel connected to both of you and you, Ava, being a, a new friend. I feel beauty. I feel the yes. beauty of the connection, the warmth mm -hmm. you, you said. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed, Valerie. And thank you. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity. Oh, it was, it's been an honor. It really has. Um, we shared a lot of techniques, ideas, rituals, perspectives, philosophy. What are, what are each of you walking away with after this conversation? For me, it's funny. It's the last the exercise La Rue had for us mm. because even though I do that it's, it's sometimes I also take it for granted and one thing I was doing a creative course the other day and one thing they said is to to stimulate your creativity is do things that you've never done before or do it in a different way for example go downstairs backwards or tie your shoes with your other hand that you don't normally, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So when LaRue commented on start to be present to again, I thought, wow, I really haven't done that because I already, I, I already am present, right? Mm -hmm. But perhaps I am skipping things because I am not doing it mindfully. Like I'm doing to, I'm going to do this as an exercise and see what I discover. I may discover something new. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm taking with me. There you go. Love that. LaRue, what about you? Um, I think this conversation has given me permission to unleash my creativity around beauty. Mm -hmm. um, although it's important and I try to do something like cut a flower, there's so much more that wants to be unleashed mm -hmm. inside of me and to, to just do it more and mm -hmm. um, just go for it. Mm. Anything in particular that you'd like to tee us off and you know, let us know? Well, like looking in, like looking at my wall right now, I have this big um, whiteboard with projects on it. And when I get ideas, I just put a little post-it on it. It's pretty ugly and disorderly right now. Mm. And I'd like to make, give myself permission to have it be beautiful. And so whatever that may look like once I go explore, that would be the this one is you know to really respect my value of beauty with mm. that board that's in front of me because it doesn't really reflect beauty right now mm. awesome <laughs> yeah. and I you need it. some support in that i'm sure eva could give her two cents <laughs> <laughs> but i'm so glad you're doing that that's a great point too you know we are surrounded with things that oh this is is you know it's practical but we don't think of elevating it Yes. yes oh my gosh absolutely you know, I, I tolerate too much of that you know it's like well it's not important there are other things that are more important I mean, i'll get to that someday and someday doesn't come so i need to just choose to do it put it on the calendar and do it <laughs> i'm laughing awesome <laughs> there's so many of those things that i'm tolerating so i'm like oh, i don't have the time or the interest or the information and this is so silly but i had a notebook uh, it's just like a regular composition book and i bought this cover for it on amazon years ago it was made out of like this burlap material and it was really cool and it was my initials and everything. And I had it and I had it and I've traveled with it. And it's brought me so much joy, but then it started to fray. And then I couldn't really like get, you know, I would try to burn the ends off so it wouldn't fray. And but it just, it was just falling apart. And I kept that falling apart cover 
for years <laughs> until <laughs> yesterday when I was just like I me mean, when I looked at my pants and I had all these like pieces of <laughs> of this fiber all over I'm like ah! I'm like why why do I still deal with this why am I trying to keep this you know I should throw it away it's it's done its work it's run its course it's no longer beauty or cool or fun it's and I it, it it's taken me literally I want to say maybe three years that has been in this kind of dismal condition, but I wasn't using it enough. So I was like, oh, yeah, I barely notice it. But now the more I've noticed it, I was just like, ah. So it's funny, we do tolerate some things yes, that don't bring us that joy. And I think what I'm taking away from this conversation is I'm going to be doing a little bit of exploration in my own space because I think there's some things that I've been just used to seeing there is like a fixture yes. that is really give, getting in the way of the, the kind of, exp, you know, the, the, the expression of myself. Um, I might Yay. invite Eva to come by yeah. and do a little looking with me. Lua, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Eva, you can work on the physical stuff. And with LaRue, I work on the mental stuff. Yes. Uh, any final words, ladies, before we bid adieu? I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Laru, you are amazing. It was just great. And I got insights and it was fun. And I was tired this morning and now it's like, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I can go now and do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I feel really inspired as well. And um um, yeah, what was the question? I'm so yeah, sorry. any final words or anything that you'd like to share before we wrap up? I, I just feel really inspired, you know, to, to create and like a toleration, like that orchid back there. It's a silk flower in that black vase. I've never liked that black vase and I've been tolerating it. And so I'm going to clean up that toleration, restore my energy because I have a white vase that it goes mm. in be much more beautiful. So yes going to be beautifying. <laughs> Ooh, I, I'm going to hold you to that. And then I'm inspired to say after we wrap this um, conversation up that we set a time, a calendar yes. for us all three to get together and meet since we all live in the same area. Let's do it. Here in yes. Dallas. So, oh, I've been so, so <laughs> inspired and, and humbled and energized by the two of you. Thank you so much for saying yes. Thank you for sharing yourselves, your ideas, your challenges, your assignment. <laughs> and I just want to put out there for any of you who've been listening to this and need this type of information or this type of energizing conversation or insight, both Eva and LaRue are gifted, talented individuals, and they express those interests, that, that gift in different ways. So I encourage you all to reach out to them. And if the two of you are okay with it, I'd love to put your contact information or whatever you're comfortable with in the show notes so that people can connect with you directly. If they have questions, they can at least ping you and go, how would you deal with this? Or whatever that is. Yes. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> and those of you tuning in today, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Please be sure to subscribe to notquitestrangers.com so that you get this episode and many others directly delivered to your inbox. So thank you everybody so much for tuning in. Eva, LaRue, it's been a pleasure. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for Have a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to the podcast, Not Quite Strangers. Be sure to subscribe or follow on your favorite video or podcast platform. And for more information and content, go to notquitestrangers.com. See you next time.